everybody, and welcome back to our Return to Ravnica complete set review. I am here with... Oh, man, I forgot my name. Oh. Brad Nelson. That guy. Yeah, that's oh, my name. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm Evan Irwin. We're here today to talk about all the Rakdos cards and the red cards. And what is more Rakdos than a crypt full of blood? blood. blood. All right, so Blood Crypt is up first. It is a shock land. It's going to yes. be a mainstay in the metagame. These cards are incredibly powerful. We've been waiting for years for them to be reprinted. Um, there was a joke I, I saw on Twitter by Gregory Marks, who I believe used to work at Watsi or does or something. Um, he, he was just like, you know, they were they were made with names that were supposed to be, you know, sort of generic enough to not be required for Ravnica. You know, it's oh, really? not like you know a Rakdos crypt. Yep. It's a Blood Crypt. Yep. That they only reprinted them in, in Ravnica. Ravnica. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I think the, the general feel was like, yes, of course these are going to be reprinted in like core sets or whatever mm -hmm. because that's what they were sort of designed to do and then they didn't. And then seven years later they made them again in the Ravnica. Well, I mean, I think after a couple of years they're like, we want to go back to Ravnica because it was a sweet story. And I feel like they're just going to like go new planet, old planet, or new world, old world, new world, or old world. Because it's, it's pretty sweet how that works out. Right. And returning back to places you know, I mean, that's a good thing. It's familiar. People like that. They mm -hmm. knew what they liked before. You know, there were sort of, there's little notes they can hit to remind people of stuff. And, and we'll finally go back to Champions. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I love Champions of Kamigawa. Champions of Kamigawa was amazing. It was. I, it was terrific. And Champions, Champions, Betrayers is my favorite draft format of all time. Really? I've never drafted it. Oh, it's so good. I bet the Kodama's Reaches are good. Uh, Kodama's Reaches are good. Basically, the arcane spells. Like, yeah. you know, and the spice on the arcane was, like, super cool. They had the, the little spirit creatures that get, like, the key counters and stuff, and you could do stuff. It was great. But, well, and, and I think part of it is that, and you'll find a lot of people with their favorite formats, is I had a lot more success with mm -hmm. uh, Kamigawa Limited than I did basically any ever format. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Ever. Um, I top... Uh, I think I topped 32 a GP. Right on, buddy. I did. Now, this was the story. So I squeaked into day two. This was Kamigawa Limited. Squeaked into day two. Like, it was the last match of the day, and the judges were around. And I was like just squeaking out like a 1 1 producer, yeah. like token producer guy, and just like just got in just enough for lethal. <laughs> just enough to give me day two. I immediately 0 2 1 my first draft. <laughs> oh, no. And just felt terrible. You know, and I was like, I remember I called home. I was just like, I just feel bad. Like, I just think I just want to leave early. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> and I sat down for my last draft, and I just, like, went mono blue ninjas. Yeah, and, and just crushed. it just ran the whole table. Just three out. I played against uh, Chris, uh, Star Wars kid. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the last round, you know, and uh, and just beat him. And because back then, they used to have the, uh, the amateur prize. So between the amateur oh, prize sweet. and top 32, yeah, I went home with, like, 600 bucks. Yeah, and one more. Okay, it was sweet. All, all I can say about that is... Why is he talking about champions? <laughs> Are we talking so about Return to Ravnica? All right, I was telling the story. Now, Crit Born Horror is not good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I actually kind of like him. I know he's bad, but it's sweet. It's like it's a very interesting card. I like him. A, I want to like him a lot. I really so do. The problem with this card is a lot of people see the upside. Yeah. But they what they what this card just like boils down to is. It is powerful when you have options, and it's terrible when you don't. It's powerful when you're winning. Yes. And it's not good when you're not. So yeah. it's like, you top deck, and you're like, <sighs> go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that moment. Like, I mean, in Limited, I think he's probably pretty solid. Like, you know, I think there's a ways he at the very least could be good in Limited. You can craft things around him. No, because if you hit a person for eight damage, they're dead. Well, yeah, but I mean, but we're talking about just like three or four. Like, you know, mm -hmm. just making a 3-3 three, three trampler and a 4-4 four, four trampler, you know, uh, use some spells, put yep. some enchantments on, do something with him, he's okay. But like, in Constructed, I mean, when you go like, okay, you have like one drop, two drop, and horror, it doesn't really matter what that three drop is, because you're already on curve, you're we already, already kicking have, butt. We have Messenger right now. Exactly. He's just, he's not as good as a lot of other options, and he's cute. He's not cute. He's a horror. I mean, yeah. He's, he's scary. Cool he's got card. like a million legs and arms. He's coming he's, to get He's you. like a spider. Yeah. I don't like, no, I don't like spiders. Uh, nightmare fuel. Eh. No. Dead reveler. He's getting you. He's a 3-4 four for 3 that can't block or a 2-3 that can't. This guy I, is very good. Yes, I, I definitely love the Unleash mechanic. I, I like the flavor of calling it Unleash. It's like you take the collar off your guy, you can't control him anymore. Yeah. You know, it's just really sweet. He doesn't work for you anymore. Ah. Uh, can't but, control me. <laughs> yeah, all of these, all these <laughs> mid-range ones that are like two threes or three threes for three, but then four fours for three, like they're all super good. And this one is like a really good playable one because 
if you if you're on the play, it's a three four. If you're on the draw, it's a two three. Yeah. That's like one of the most clear signals I have with this card. I feel like it's always going to be a two three on the draw, which is fine. Yeah. But when you're on the play and you get to play your three four on, like, what are they going to do to it? I don't know if this was a thing, but I have a feeling that Unleash originally made the creature attack. I don't, you know, I mean, I feel like it would play into it mm -hmm. if you unleash them, they get a counter, and they must attack each turn because you know they're. Just but then they get a block for that first turn, and that's bad. Right, right, right. And but the but now you know it's just like it can't block, and but it's a lot bigger, and you get a lot more than what you mm -hmm. paid for, and it's just value. And I the the two sides of this card are just terrific. I mean, unleash would be such a worse mechanic if they're forced to attack because oh, forced yeah. to attack is so bad. Yeah, it's very bad. Tatter yeah. Maniac says, "What's up?" You know, <laughs> so sure. But Dead Reveler is a good one. He's yes, a very good comp. Yes, he is. Uh, Deviant Glee. Then, you know, it's when I see cards like this, I'm like, yeah, they always are just pumping up the spells. Like every time they make an old spell better, Unholy you just strength. yeah, you just know. And so now Plus. it's a better one. The 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 weird though is red to give trample. Uh, I mean, you know, they slice the color pie up, and they say that like you know, tramples for green, and it also goes into black and red a little yeah. bit, but. I mean, ultimately, I think they just kind of sort of justified this as a Rakdos card by giving it some sort of activated ability. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unholy strength with upside, but you still have to yeah, pay for that upside. It can't be first strike. That'd be real. That'd be real good. Yeah, that'd be almost too good. So, but trample is just a weird. It's a weird ability to tag on. Yeah, yeah it's okay. It's mm -hmm. fine. Fun card. Hellhole Flailer. Now, this is the card you were like talking up a lot, right? No, no, not really. <clears throat> I we'll thought get, you were. No, not really. This one. I mean, like, I I like it. It seems okay. Yeah, I definitely like this card in limited just for the ability to like hit them. Fling it. Yeah, you can just it's like yeah, built in fling. In the fact, I'll flail it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but for three mana for a four three, you know, can't block. Good. No, it's three very two can block? Better. Yeah, three two for three or th four three, like I love, I just love it because it's going to be so good and limited. This mechanic mm. is just awesome. It is. It's a, It's also like a skill tester, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like when to unleash and when not to unleash. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be a thing and I think that's awesome. And, and the person puts in the play and then thinks and you just try to manipulate them like, dude, you're not going to want to unleash it when you see this card. And they're like, unleash it. Like, Darn it. <laughs> you're not supposed to know that. You're too good at it. <laughs> now the rage mutt. Rawr. 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 He's raging. How does he have lifelink? Why does he have lifelink? <laughs> These abilities are so weird. This Rakdos gets lifelink. Like, huh? okay, I understand. Like, here's the here's the you know the cop out defense. It's like, well, in the world of Ravnica, many different guilds learn things from other guilds. Oh they just yeah, the Rage Mutt hung out with the Azorius guys for a while. Like, what? well, no, it was a mutt for the Azorius. Oh. It was their dog, but then the so Rakdos came him, in and then, and then destroyed him, and then mm -hmm. he became an undead. He says, like uh, he should be like a zombie dog. Bark, bark, bite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, all right, but ultimately, for those who are, like those who do want constructed and limited help, constructed no, limited is a fine card. Baller. Yeah, he's a baller and limited. He's good because yeah, he also because he runs haste. out. Yeah, he runs out like he's going to gain you three. Yeah, like they could have something to remove it or whatever. Sure. But my, by and large, you're going to gain three mm -hmm. immediately, doing three damage. And to if something. they don't have a blocker for it, just. Gets you that first turn. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the life totals are switching and yep. you're in you're in good shape. Yeah, so this card's very good. Really good and limited. Now Blood Fray Giant. This card is gonna be bonkers good and limited. So good. Five four for five or even a four three that interacts with your opponent. The card is just a five four oh. for four? Or a five four for four, yeah. That's just pushed. That's just seriously pushed. Like with trample, wow. Like that's yeah. what I think the Unleashed cards wanted. They wanted trample. <clears throat> they wanted some way to really take advantage of the fact that they have yeah. a power and toughness boost beyond what they sort of start with. And trample is just the best way to do that. Yeah. I'm pumping my power. I can't wait over. to play with Unleash because I feel like going in in, a lot of people are like, I'm just gonna unleash everything. Right. But you can't because then they your opponent gets all control over chump blocks and attacks and they get to play magic while you are forced to just play this different game. Right. So it's going to be fun to see when to unleash, when not. Like, you have a curve of unleash creatures like, okay, well, I'm going to unleash him, but not him, but not him, and then I'm going to unleash that guy or something. Yeah. Like, really yeah. weird how that works out. Yeah, it, it gives you this sort of choice and lets you sort of survey the board mm -hmm. and say, I'm feeling like these should be unleashed now. And then something will happen and you'll be like, yeah. I'm not unleashing anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I love that. Red and black get options, right? Like yeah. that's not usually what they get. So right. even if it's a if it's an option to take away options, it's still it's still interesting. Absolutely. So the Hellsteed, now he is the guild leader. He's he's the one you can get at the pre-release. A first strike, hey, six four? Mm-hmm. 
Maybe I'm Rakdos. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to be playing some swamps and mountains. He's a nightmare horse. He's oh. a nightmare. <laughs> Who was it? Dark Horse? Black Horse? Black Horse? Dark Horse? Dark Knight? No, from from uh, the sing-along blog. <laughs> bad Horse. <laughs> bad Horse. It's Bad Horse. <laughs> He's coming to get you. Like, oh he, God! If I thought of that joke earlier, I would have learned the song. No. Oh. Well, he's a nightmare horse. He's coming from your dreams to kick your ass. Yeah. That's hello, what's hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car. That this guy is like, he's been pushed all the right ways. Like, if trample was something we were just gushing about now, like mm-hmm. first strikes even better. Like, you want to make it as difficult as possible to block these guys, and that's about as hard as it gets. Yes. And the fact that you're just like, six mana get you, I mean, there's almost zero, like there's that 2-7 guy that redirects all the damage mm-hmm. to him, and that's the only one I can think of so far that is able to really stop the No, Hell yeah, Steve. this this card on turn six is just going to change the game. Yeah. It's super good. Things are going to get really scary really fast. Yeah, and, oh, and yeah, honestly, I have to you don't even those. have to unleash him. You don't unleash, you just play him and block. He's a first strike 5-4. Right, you, or you just, well, I'm getting it. Like, now I've got the option of blocking next turn if you play something powerful, like... Yeah, this guy is very good. And I screwed that up. It's bad horse, bad horse, bad horse, bad horse. All right. You can't go back and fix it. I'm sorry. You're trying. Can we edit it out? Too late. Fred uh, Boar. Love this card. Love so it good. ever since they made Jace awesome. Oh, for sure. Like <clears throat> the And it, some people were just like, why is this card rare? And I'm like, because Wizard sells packs of magic cards. And this <laughs> is a card that you're going to want if you're going to play black red decks, whether it's zombies <laughs> or whatever. You're going to need probably three to four of this card. I actually don't. Because it does all the things. I don't think it's because Wizard sells magic cards. I think the reason that this is a rare is because all Planeswalkers are mythic and they're like legendary and they're awesome. Mm-hmm. And a uncommon should not be able to permanently kill a Planeswalker on its hmm. own. Like a removal spell. I honestly believe that. Oblivion Ring can stop it for a while, but you can get it back. Okay. I feel like an effect that kills a creature or a Planeswalker is such a big effect that it, it deserves a rare slot. I mean, it's a terrific card. It's very sort of Maelstrom pulse yes. you know, in that in that regard. And it's just... It, I wonder if there's a different card in the set that's Maelstrom pulse mm, Yeah, it's rare. Yeah. Eh. No, nothing? I don't know. Okay. I got nothing. Dreadboard's sweet, though. And if you're playing Jun Zombies, which I personally think will be the, the most popular kind, uh, this card is... Yeah, this guy. Uh, will be, you know, it'll be a centerpiece. It'll be a mainstay. For the next couple years, for sure. Like, oh, yeah. This will be something that, well, it dies to Dreadboar. Well, that, planes, that Planeswalker is awesome, but it dies to Dreadboar, of yeah. course. Now, the Roustabout begins the ridiculously corny flavor text of the Rakdos cards. Yeah, your death row seats, buddy. Nah, nah. Oh, guys. Guys. Wow. I mean, I guess you want to get cute about it. I, I just, mean. It, it, wizard, working at Wizards must be like working here. Because we're looking at Wizards <laughs> products, right? And other people look like, it's like they show the flavor text and they pass it over. And then the guy that passed over goes, <laughs> and then the person's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they high five yeah. and to the printers. Yep. <laughs> Whatever. You know, yeah. there's a couple more like that. And like the art is just a little ridiculous. Yeah, the art's very ridiculous. Uh, with the mask and the but whole bit. But let's talk about this card. Talk I think it's card. awesome. It's a two for two for two that regenerates, right. or it is a Dredge Skeletons. I don't think Dredge Skeletons is a terrible card. Yeah, but I mean, and uh, Dredge Skeletons that can uh, bash in, still regenerate, mm-hmm. but still bash in for two, still be a bear when you want it to be. It should be good on the curve. No, this, yeah, this will, this will see a ton of play. Yeah. I like it. Cool. I like it a lot. So Havoc Festival. This was a Gavin oh, yeah. Verhey uh, card. Remember, did you read his article about it? He was very proud that this was, I think, his his first contribution to the development really? team. Really? Yeah, it was uh, a card because he liked uh, sulfuric vortex, you know, mm-hmm. and dealing damage and uh, losing life and can't gain life and that type of stuff. And now it's just like, yep, you just lose half over and over again. Well, it's got the best art synth descendants path. It's got some pretty terrific, like, all hell's breaking loose. This is, like, one of my favorite pieces of all time. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's so good. Like, I see the blow, blown up one where I can just, like, get it, like, this big in front of my face. I'm like, this is amazing. There's so much <laughs> stuff going on. It's so good. Yeah. People, yeah, and little devil blowing the mm-hmm. fire in that guy's yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. As a card, constructed a little expensive. What? No, this is going to be completely unplayable. Well, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah, a little, yeah. it's too expensive to be... To be there, but for uh, you know a casual format like an EDH format, I can imagine this is going to see some play. Well, yeah, people like it. Says its name has festival in it. Can I build a festival deck? How many festival Ooh. cards are there? Uh, I don't know. Could it be called the Festivus deck for the rest of us? 
Oh. Oh. Look at you. Now the cackler. I like the cackler. I <laughs> liked it until I played with it. It's bad, isn't it? It's not good. So the problem with yeah. zombies is if you run this hyper aggressive deck, it's fine, but there's a lot of ways to fight it. You can just like design your deck to beat two twos. Well, it's strangle root guys, right? I mean, like, yeah. all right, I guess I'll trade it's, and have a three two left over. You had a two two for one. Yeah, it's not as good as a Diagraph ghoul, and it's not as good as a grave crawler. Like, it can't block like grave crawler. It can't block as but a it two two. Come back. Yeah, it doesn't come back. <laughs> and there's not a lot of reach where in grave crawler there is all the reach. But you could just design your zombie deck to be as hyper aggressive as possible and just try to get there. That's what you want. You want your Rakdos Cacklers in your deck. You want a bunch of uh, Rancors, and you just want to like get them dead. Falconrath, Risk Crest, whatever. Anything hyper aggressive. Yeah. It's just not the game I want to play. You, yeah. have, you don't have that many options. I feel like you know at this point, like Zombies is going to be such a force that it might you know require Innistrad to completely rotate out before the Cackler ever sees any sort of serious play. I agree. But once that's, that happens, it'll be insane. Yeah, once all those really good, like once Gravecrawler and mm -hmm. once Dire Ravager will leave us, like Cackler's going to get a lot better and it's going to be a lot more interesting, I think. Oh, for sure. This card, I mean, it is a very good card. Now the charm. I like it, the charm. D here's a sideboard. Mm-hmm. And the charm condenses it into oh. one nice package. It's so good. Yeah. Like, people were just like, you know, why does this card not do X or why does it do Y? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, doesn't it do like everything the red black deck wants to do? Yeah, it, it does so many different things in the sideboard. Like, I don't know how great this card is going to be, but it like it's a graveyard hate spell that also is your shatter. Now the third ability is not that great, but it can do something some of the time. Oh, oh, splinter twin combo. Well, no, we, we can't. We can't splinter twin combo anymore. Well, no, I'm talking about in modern. No, we can't like, do that anymore. What? Abrupt decay. Hey, you ruse. Well, abrupt decay is whatever, but just let me live in my magic Christmas land just for two seconds. All right, all right, all right. Uh, do you have any response? Because I have this Kiki Jiki and this this special mind. I'm gonna make a guy, make a guy, make a guy. Can I go to combat? Rectus <gasps> Joe. I'm dead. GG. Sign right here on the slip right here. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fine, take <laughs> it. I know, but now people are just like Restoration Angel deals three instead of, you know, like Pestermite, which only deals two, so they're going to be like not as many creatures out. I don't care if I'm the black red deck, this should kill you. When you start Kiki Jiki in anything, yes. this should kill you. Like, and that's what I like the most about it. And it was my favorite interaction ever. Anyone's just like, Splinter Twin combo, and I was just like, died cackling. I couldn't help it. <laughs> it was terrific. I loved it. But, you know, the sort of like, you know, the Exile of the Graveyard, the Jun Charm esque, mm -hmm. the, you know, destroy a target artifact. I mean, those swords or whatever will destroy you. Uh, and other, uh, other artifacts, of course, as well. And the deal in one damage, man. Price of progress for creatures. That's no, that, powerful stuff. It, it is powerful, especially if you like, if you board it in and you just build this big board presence with a Falconrath Riskrat hole in the board, and yeah. they're like, "Well, I'll play more guys," and you're just like, ah. "I'll play tokens, I'll populate, yep. blah, blah blah." And you're like, "All right, price progress for creatures." And then, oh, there's mm -hmm. another one, price progress for creatures. Take infinite. Yep. Like, I like that charm a lot. Yeah, no, it's it, very good. It you don't take happy. damage, do you? No. no. Okay, yeah, it's not price; it's just for them. Yeah. Oh. No, it's not true. Or each creature deals one damage, damage to its control. Oh, okay. Yeah, you do take okay. damage yourself. You'll still take one damage. Whatever. So here's a guild gate. It's not blue. This one is bad. This is not good. Not good. Because you want to hit your curve, and this doesn't really let you hit your curve. No. Now, blue decks, normally controlish in nature, mm -hmm. can work around that. Yep. Can work their turns and sort of craft their gameplay around that. Because they need that. to be very consistent with their spells. So Correct. They, they, don't, they don't mind the tempo loss. Right. But if, you know, you should be using Dragon Skull Summit, you should be using Blood Crypt, everything else should be... Eh. Yeah, you should be less greedy and just play close to mono black with just a very tiny splash. Yep. If you're, you're playing with these in your constructed decks, eh, you're probably reaching. Unless you're a, a Grixis Control deck. Well, yeah. And I'm sure we'll see that, but they'll also play blue guild gates. Yes. You know, as we were speaking of. Now, in limited, fine card. Oh god, yeah. These are these things are they're and not gonna be as big as well, the Karoos. The Karoos. Oh. But that you will want to draft these, especially because I think a lot of the cards are very splashable, like a lot of powerful spells. Right. So you're gonna want to pick up the ally ones of the colors you're already in. Like if you're in Azurius, you're gonna want to pick up uh an is it here or there if you can. Because you never know when you're going to want to splash that is it charm or some kind of removal spell or yep or there was that that one that uh, there's the there's the red 
or there's the blue enchantment that give it, or no, there's a red enchantment that give it plus two, plus two, and then mm -hmm. the blue gives it flying. You know, in your Rakdos deck, you pick up an Azek Gilgate, you know, just in case you need yep. to use it that way, which is great. Um, I'm also going to take this time to really appreciate the fact that Karoos are not back because yes, thank those you. things were so scared of them. completely, insanely amazing. Like, you just first and picked I didn't them. And I don't want to go back to like, like, oh, my deck is the nuts. Why? Because I'm playing 14 lands. Yeah, yeah 14 lands, <coughs> like five crews. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like the best thing ever. So it, I think it took the player base a little while to understand how good crews were yeah. at the time, seven years ago. But, you know, nowadays, everyone knows exactly how good they are. And the advantage of being on the play with Cruz was so good. Uh, like, going was, on the play and getting an extra card, oh, it was so good. It, it just fixed all your mana. It just accelerated. I mean, it was it was. They beautiful. were busted. They were amazing. Now, here's the key rune. I think this key rune is sweet. This is the best key rune this will see play, I think. I think it's, like, super good in a black, red, maybe a Grixis control. It's a defensive creature. It's awesome. I, I, I really love this card. Got shot no longer in the format means this card is sweet. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Why not? It makes perfect sense. There's Tragic no slip. gut shot. Tragic slip. Yeah, I know, but they can't play it for free. You know what I mean? They can't. But it's like turn five. I know. <laughs> Work with my example here. Huh? We're trying to be a team, Brad. We're a team. Brad, just a step with the gut shots. All right, so <laughs> three ones with first strike are good. The best key rune. I don't yep. know if the bar's so low that doesn't mean a lot. You know what I mean? And the bar is really low. Really low. Weather seed <laughs> totem. <laughs> it's a 5-3. Yeah. Now, the Lord of Riots. Tell me about the Lord of Riots. I really wanted to play it, but, like, <sighs> the problem with these mythics is, like, Falconrath Aristocrat is legal. Okay. How would you ever play this card over Falconrath Aristocrat? Man, this card's powerful stuff. I, I mean, the second ability, for what it's worth, it just seems really weird and tacked on, but okay. But, I mean, flying trample, 6-6 six, six for 4, you got my attention. But you you have to hit them. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, it's just a 6-6 six, six for 4. It's just 6-6 six, six, flying for 4, yeah, Miss Persecutor. There's a different 6-6 six, six for 4 that I think is an all-star, but it's not this one. Ooh, we'll talk about that one in a bit. I know. That's good. All right. Uh, yeah, I think Aristocrat just trumps this guy. Yeah, I mean, he, he has... <laughs> Certainly okay. for right now. If a card has restriction from not even being able to get cast... Then it's not good. Well, is this the sort of the point where I, you know, the opposite of the key rune? Like the key rune's good, I feel, because gut shot's not in the format, even though that might be silly. This card's bad because gut shot's not in the format, so you can't just like pay well, two life, get you, pay four for a six six flying trampler. I, I don't know why it got printed. Actually, uh, none mean? of this card makes sense to me. Why does it have a restriction not to be able to get cast? Cost black, black, red, red. Its secondary ability does nothing. Its secondary ability is weird. And it's an abyssal persecutor. Yeah, I mean, it's a Bristol Persecutor, but at the same time, the, the restriction seems fine because it's like black-red, right? If black-red would have a restriction, it should be your opponent got hurt. But the the creatures cost less? Okay. Okay. What? I mean, that seems sort of casual goodness to me. Like, they tacked it on for the people to get cute and clever and with their pingers and their X spells that play, like, the Eldrazi's and stuff. I guess people like... To have to like work to get their spells into play, and that's okay. No, people do. They really do. Like some people like to sort of jump through the hoops as necessary. I mean, yeah. the Johnnies of the world certainly want to jump through all the hoops to make sure that their deck works the way they want it to. Now, the Rakdos Ringleader. <laughs> so I much. mean, the art just makes me laugh every time I see it. <laughs> it's just so. Funny. And for my next trick, like, <laughs> it's just like I'm gonna pull this rabbit. Out of this guy's skull. Wait, what? <laughs> Out of my arm. Like, you know, like the thing. I just felt like they really wanted to make this card, and so they just had to keep pushing the cost until it was to like <laughs> comedic ridiculousness. <laughs> like, six for a three one, like it regenerates and it has first strike, but like, I think they were just like, you know, whatever it deals combat damage, we want them to discard at random. We Finally, have to make this happen. I got it into play and I hit you. Discard a card. I'm like, dude, I don't have a hand. I'm hitting nothing. you for eight in the air. It's like, like, what are you doing? Turn nine, and like, nothing's <laughs> happening. Uh, yeah, it, well, this is also a card you don't want them to push, you know? <laughs> you don't want this effect to be good. No, you don't want it to be a four mana, three one. Right. So you're in this weird position where it's just like, well, we want this ability, but we can't cost it any, like, we can't cost it aggressively because you don't want it that way. And here you are. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> For his next trip. Now, the Shred Freak, I've heard a lot of people really excited about this because, I mean, I'm, I'm more into cube culture, and the cube, you know, people of the world are really excited. Yes. Two mana, two one haste guy, like, they've been wanting this. Popper cubes have been wanting this. No, like, th this card is bonkers. I think it's, like, even decent in standard. It's good in wow. the red decks. 
Uh, we played with it a little. Putting a obviously putting a ranker on it is just the the, the best thing ever. Woo! And it's fine. It's going to see some play. I think in a red aggressive deck, it's better because mm -hmm. Black already has a bunch of tools. Sure. But like in a hyper aggressive red deck, I think might potentially exist if we keep working on it. We're getting there. Uh, too bad that Koth leaves when he, he's coming in. But uh, I mean, you know, well, Koth, Koth sort of had his day for a little while. Yep. And people were legitimately scared. Um, I mean, I spoke to some some Watsi developers privately, and they were, you know, they want to make planeswalkers that are a little bit like, you know, dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like not, not a lot dangerous, but a little bit. And they had legitimate concerns that Koth was a little pushed, but mm -hmm. ultimately not that pushed. And uh, but this card, you know, just it it it's it's terrific. It's again, it's a a very light use of hybrid. But it's just the right kind of card. It you is. Want. I mean, you can put in your mono black aggressive decks, your mono red. It's going to be yep. picked way higher than it should, and or when if if it was just red, red or black, black, right? Sure. It's going to get picked all the time in cube. Yep. I, I I like it. I like the design. I didn't like how fragile of a body it has, but just having a two one haste for two mm -hmm. seems like a completely fair card. Now looking at this card and saying how good it is, and I think it could be constructed play. I finally realized how good Goblin Guide was. I just realized it. They played Goblin Guide in like Rug Delver in Legacy. Do have they? They did, yeah, for a long time. Wow, I didn't know because, that. Because like back when it had like Grim Lava Mancers and stuff, mm -hmm. and it was just sort of like yeah, you know, but like the double Goblin Guide draw would kill you just like it would in Standard. Yeah. And this guy is sweet. Now, oh, this is the first card I saw of the set. Oh, well, lucky you. Jake and I were sitting in our hotel room and at, at the SCG Open in Minneapolis, and we're just both like, "How did they print this?" <laughs> How, like how how would you print this card? What 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 were what were they thinking? Like you when, kill a planeswalker and make him discard their hand? Oh my god! When you like wake up Rakdos, he's pissed. He's yes. really mad, and he's going to kill everybody. Yeah, I mean, Blightning was one thing, and for what it's worth, Blightning was underestimated for a while. Mm -hmm. Like when Blightning was first you know unveiled, there was like, eh, it's good, eh. and like later helped define the format with Bloodbraid. But Rakdos' return, pretty sure everyone is like nuts over this card immediately. Which actually, I think it's way worse than Blightning. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, obviously yeah. on the raw cost, but like you know, in terms of flexibility, in terms of Cyclonic Rift plus Rakdos' return, I mean. Any bounce this, make you discard it, and you deal damage, like value on value on value. Yeah. The thing I'm mostly scared about with this card, though, is the how awesome it is in limited. I know it's a mythic, so you're not going to see it much, but this card is ridiculous in limited. Like, in, sealed? in the mid game, discard your hand. In the top deck late game, oh, I have a fireball. Yeah. I have a fireball and, or if you're like sandbagging a removal spell yep. for whatever, you know, fireball and get rid of your removal spell. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. This card is gross. <laughs> this card was made to be exciting. This card was made to be powerful, and I think they got there. Two points. Two points for Watsy. <laughs> Rick's Moddy Guild Mage. This is such a weird, weird the Guild Mage. I don't like it. I don't like it. Wizards, make me a new one. This is not one of the Rick's Guild Mage. Mm. Yeah. I like. I like the Rakdos Guild Mage. Rakdos Guild Mage was sweet. It did the things. It, it, it is literally living into my cube. It is going to yeah. be, it is in my cube today. It might not be there tomorrow, but we'll talk about it. The uh -huh. Rick Smoddy, yeah, he's just not as good anymore. But for his time, he was amazing. Yeah, he was very good. I remember I remember running the Suicide deck, the Suicide yeah. Red Black with Bob's mm -hmm. and, and Greater Gargadon. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I've taken nine from Greater Gargadon off, <laughs> off a Dark Confidant before. And I want to mox with that deck. I remember clearly. Um, and this guy just doesn't do the same thing. Oh man, thing. Mox for you and me mean two different things. Oh yeah, it must be S versus like, <laughs> yeah. I literally won like a Mox Sapphire. Yeah, I was like, was. wait, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 you know, the Guild Mages, I mean, I understand what they're going for, right? They're going for an aggressive Guild Mage. But yes. the other one, you would kill creatures, you'd discard a card and give minus two, minus two, or you would make a two one haste guy for, for four free. mana. Well, for four mana, but it, you didn't you didn't lose any board like like yeah, uh, it, card. it was also at end of turn, so yes. you could wait until their end of turn, make a two one untap, make another two one and attack, attack for six. That was this guy. That was just this one creature, mm -hmm. and this guy. It's insanely worse. <laughs> I mean, the one cool thing I like about him is if you play him on turn two and you attack, they have to have a three three, right? Or you can like kill kill their guy, so they can right. never block him. So like, you attack with them on turn two, in limited, they take it because they can't do anything with two two. You don't have any three or two another spell to play, so you can just dome them for one, right? And in the really 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 late game, you can just alpha and fireball them for four, sure. 
So he does have a lot of cool reach. He, his ability right. is really good for board styles. So in limited, he's going to be awesome. He's going to be terrific in limited. He, he, I mean, like again, I, I know what they were sort of getting at for the guild mage. They wanted to mm -hmm. be aggressive. They wanted the whole, you know, Rakdos theme to be: you don't want to block me, or if you do, you're going to suffer for it. And so I get how both of those things work together, and it's pretty cool. But just, yeah. I was left wanting. I was left one. Yeah, same here. And it's fine. Skullrin, I actually called out Skullrin on the show because this is a <coughs> this is a very rare ability for them to put on a card. To discard two cards at random from target opponent. Like again, I think they costed it right out of constructed, thank you. But the the idea that, you know, you discard at random targeted hasn't been seen since Alara it's, Reborn. It's not targeting though. Well, I mean, you, fair enough. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm obviously thinking of constructed, but for what it's worth, that's why you know, like it's it sort of it's geared for like an EDH world yes. in terms of each player does a blah blah blah. But in terms of I, we are in a two-player game in standard or whatever, and I pay mana and you discard two cards at random. That's a very rare thing. That's insanely rare. So they've made Black Cat, which when it dies, they discard at random. Yep. They made Sanity Nars, Nars from Alara Reborn when it, it was a one-one for Black, Red, and a Colorless. Oh when yeah, it yeah, the battlefield, yeah, yeah, yeah. They discard at random. Oh oh oh. oh. Oh, oh, go, oh, go, oh, go, go, oh, go, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so I was at my first Pro Tour, and that was my 23rd playable, and I'm sitting by Luis. Uh -huh. And that's in my opening hand. I'm like, God, I have to play this for the first spell of my draft. And I play it, and I'm playing against Jan van der Fluken, Fluken, foreign pro guy? Yeah, that was very bad of me to say it that way. It's okay. But um, I am ignorant. Um, I played him many times, but uh, I played him, and I do that, and he's like shuffling his seven cards, and he just like puts them out, and I'm like, we like take a D's 10, I'm like, six, and he flips over, Lava Lanch. Whoa. Puts in his bin, Luis giggles, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and I crush him. Variants, boys, yeah. variants. <laughs> so I don't want to spend a ton of time on Skull Ren. I recognize it's sort of an EDH geared card, but mm -hmm. I, I did want to mention and note that discarding at random, and, and a bonus on top of it, yeah. rare thing. It's very rare. Constructed, no. Limited, no. 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 Just wanted to get that out there. No. Now, Slaughter Games. You know Cranial Extraction used to be a $20 card? No. Cranial Extraction, and this is a Champions thing because I'm old. Um, when oh, they I do first, know that, yeah. Yeah, when they first came out, you know, now it's Memoricide these days, yeah. and now it's Slaughter Games. Um, but they had, uh, you know, Cranial Extraction came out, and everyone was just like wigging out. They're like, mm -hmm. OMGs, you know, the game has changed. You can name whatever you want and get rid of whatever you want. This is super powerful. Well, nowadays, like, it's just like, hmm. Yeah, you're going to exile some stuff. Well, yeah, but back then we'll it was like, stuff. it's like, I'm going to set up my board, you set up your board, and we'll, we'll meet up around turn five. Mm -hmm. And they're like, deal. And we both just do our own thing until turn five. I'm like, oh, okay, nice to see you again. Let's, let's, let's play magic, right? Yep. And now it's like, do you have anything on turn one? Okay, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, Slaughter Games, for what it's worth, I love the art. Well, yeah, the art is insane. Like, art if you woke up and saw that, you'd just be like, what? <laughs> I mean, it sort of—it also sort of goes to the iconic sort of Quentin Tarantino trunk shot, where yeah. he puts the camera in the trunk and then they open the yeah. trunk and there they all are. Yeah, That's yeah. very similar, you know. Like you look up and well, there's all also, these guys. It's also how scary Rakdos is right now. It's like mm. the whole culture of Rakdos. Like, I would actually like to read the one part of the book based around the part of the city that Rakdos lives in, because oh, wow. it's a lot of like unleashing these monsters, mm -hmm. but like the circus guy, remember and. Oh, yeah. And like, how do these people get old? That's what I want to know. Like, there's so much craziness in Rakdos, and there's all these people who are like, you're, they, they look like they went through childhood, and yeah, yeah, adolescence, and I'm like, how do you make it in that like lava how did you survive, filled hell? Yeah. <laughs> no, slaughter games, however, could be usable and constructed, maybe. Yes, because the best thing that, well, the coolest thing that Slaughter Games gets to do is if Miracles ever becomes a real deck, it has to deviate on its threats, which makes it weaker. That's fair. Because you can't just kill people with Tamiyo and um, Entreat. Entreat because you can kill them with this card. Exactly. Which is cool, um, but in Limited, mm. What? No, yeah, don't touch this in Limited. Never, oh, never put this in your deck never, in Limited. Never, never, ever, ever. You'll, you'll not be happy. No. Like, but put this guy in your deck. Mm, spawn of Rix and Mondi. He's a big one. He's a big boy. Five mana, five three. Often, I think you'll cast this one without unleash. Yes, because his big, big power and you know three toughness is enough. Yep. that makes him worth it to be able to do both. <gasps> I'm learning. I am proud of that. I just I want to thank exactly everybody. I want to thank Brad <laughs> Nelson. I just know I've learned things. I'm better. 
and my accomplishments have been so great. It's okay. It's, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter how much I've learned over the years. Like, there's just the shtick and the stigma of Evan's terrible <laughs> magic. That's we'll not true. We'll continue. It is not true. You almost beat me that one time. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Splatter fog. <laughs> now, this guy is retarded. Oh. 3-3 three, three, unleash first strike. Grar. I yeah. mean, yeah, he'll be a 3-3 three, three when you unleash him, but yeah. Wow. 2-2 two, two first strike is fine, but a 3-3 three, three first striker for 3, I don't want to block with this guy ever. Yeah, he just wants to bash in all the time. Yeah. Any tricks, he's going to get you. Like, that first strike is going to just do this work. This guy is ridiculous. I love him. I, I First strike with unleash seems like a great ability. It I, is terrific. Yeah. I, I mean, the Hellseed has it. Yeah, but I'm still curious about combat breath, I've never thought of magic in this way, hmm. but you play with, with First Strike, and you have an edge. Right. Or you play with Unleash, but they get to hit you with their two drop right away. So, does that change math? It always you know? does. I know, but like I haven't done that math. I've done limited math with like playing a 3-3 three, three for 3, sure. but I've never done it with it can't block. Yeah, and, and but at the same time, you know, again, there'll be there's that option of just playing as a two D yeah. first strike because they've like one drop, two drop, and you've maybe played you know, like game one, and this mm -hmm. is game two, and you know it's important to have someone who can yeah. block. I mean, well, mostly, mostly this is just for my own enjoyment because I think I'm going to go with Rakdos for the sealeds because the the ability that I find the most interesting to play with is, is unleash. unleash. And I'm trying to do the math while I'm working, which is, <laughs> this is what's wrong with Magic players. I am multitasking during this video. Yeah. That yeah. is so, there, I'm so He's so working wrong. while he's working. Did you know that? Hmm. Man, this guy. Love it, 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 love it. It's great. Rule spell. It's got the sweetest art, too. Man, that art is awesome. Yeah, I love it. It's I like, love Swanland. He did Worm Coil Engine. This guy is amazing. He has yeah. incredible artwork. And, and it's a robotic Cthulhu. Rawr, rawr. And I mean, you know, this is one of those where your Hellsteed, you know, is just going to kill them with this card. Mm -hmm. Or they've got something powerful and you kill it. Like, options. The fact that Red Black has so many options right now. Yes. The Unleash mechanic and all of these spells just, you know, give you the ability to sort of, mm -hmm. you know, just walk the right path. If you have a huge guy, it gets a bonus. But it's hard because the plus four can actually be a downside. You have to play this as a sorcery more often than not hmm. because if you play it as a instant and they have a growth effect, which they will use, oh, yeah. then all of a sudden you gave them a 10-2. Yeah, they yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So like it is more of a sorcery than an instant some of the time, sure. especially against uh, all the pump effects in the format. But being plus four and minus four usually just means it's removal spell. Yeah. And it's fine that way, and, but yeah. you know, and again, it's the you know, but it doesn't always have to be a removal spell. Oh no, and that's have, what's so cool. When about you have it. a huge creature, right? You're yeah, going to make I, a monster. I love that card. Yeah. Now, chaos imps. In standard, no. In limited, this guy seems pretty awesome. Like you don't even need to unleash him. Like he's just a six-five flyer for six. Like he's a hell of a dragon. But he doesn't have trample then. Oh man. But oh, there's no trample. Oh, look at the tears but as you they won't, crawl you down my trample. face. You, you can't block, you, you get chump blocked by all the tokens. Okay. Populate, 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 trample. Populate. I mean, yeah, but I mean, Jesus, that's huge. I do like the best part about his ability is you can then put counters on him. True. With uh, with any of like the scavenge. Yep. And then at that point, then he gets his ability. He That's can't fair. block anymore. Yeah, but like you know, if you have Slitherhead from K isn't Kavari. it going to be so sweet with a Slitherhead in your graveyard? And you're like, you're not going to unleash that. <laughs> I'll unleash it. <laughs> I can't wait. It's so good. Like yeah, that's that's pretty terrific. Um, now do note that it can't block as long as it has a plus one counter on it. What? It's not, you know, if you unleash, it can't block. It's if it has a plus one, plus That's what counter. I'm saying. Sure. That's what I'm saying. The uh, the the scavenge. Oh, you, you mean scavenge theirs? Scavenge theirs oh. to, to force so it can't block. Oh, that's It's like, clever. oh, you're not going to unleash it? Oh, I'll unleash it. I got you, buddy. It's <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's take you. this collar off. go. Now, Gore House Chainwalker, I have my foil ordered for my cube. Well, uh, that's, this that's card is so good in cube. Wow, like I was Three, running two for two. Yeah, I was running like you know reckless way for something. Like no, no, I'll just play one more mana and just have it be a three-two forever. Like, yeah, rah, get you. Rah. Rah. <laughs> this card's good. No, this card is very good, and it it's great because it. The interesting thing I think about this is if they play a bear, you're mm -hmm. gonna want to just keep yours as a two-one and trade. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give them the option of going bear bear. Sure. Because then if they if they attack into you, that means that they can deal with your 3-2, which means they're just going to play a worse bear. Right. 
and then you can't do anything. Your options are gone. So this guy in limited, I think, is going to be leashed up. Ooh. He's, he's leashed up. He's leashed up. So he can't be unleashed. There you go. And, you know, it just gives you options again. Yeah. All we've been going on back and forth with Rakdos is like, but if you do this, you can do that. If you do this and this, and there's the racing right here. Isn't like, this the funny thing? It's like it's the amazing. white and the blue cards were like, beat down, attack, no options, just do it. Right. Go, 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 go. And now we're like, hmm, I wonder how we play these red and black cards. They're so <laughs> intricate. <laughs> They're so tempo like. Mm. What? Now, the Thrill Kill Assassin. <laughs> Another amazing name. A terrific name. Now, Gorehouse Chainwalker, I think, is a little much, but Thrill Kill Assassin, hell yeah. I'll go for it. Oh, yeah. This just feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Oh, absolutely. A yeah. two mana, two, three death touch. That can't block. That card is amazing. If yeah. they just printed that card alone, yes. that card would be amazing. Uh, yeah. Being a one, two death touch in limited is so powerful. Like, oh. we just saw how great this, the spider was. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. The, the spider was so powerful. Yeah. And this is it. It doesn't have reach. But if you're on the play, you make a two, three death touch. What are they going to do? Who like, blocks it? You, a 2-2 two, two can't block it, it, so then you have to have a 3-3, three, three and it trades. Yep. And it's just all its all good. It's all upside. It's uncommon for a reason. Yeah. If in constructed, no, but mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. I'm going to give it a maybe. But in limited, for sure, this card is terrific in limited. Yeah. Like, because you have that option. Yeah. Because if you're aggressive or if you're on the play, like, you're just going to 2-3 it, and no one's going to want to block this guy ever. No. Absolutely uh, not. Before... Before we're done with with uh, with all the craziness, yeah. Real quick, before we're done with all the unleash, mm -hmm. I just want to say, don't draft unleash like a theme. That's mm. my first guess. I haven't drafted it, so I might be wrong. Okay. But don't just go. I'm going to draft all the unleash all guys the unleash cards <laughs> and try to be as aggressive as possible. Because uh, if mean, you're ever on the draw, you're just dead. Yeah. <laughs> if you win all your coin flips, or if you're one of those people who never lose their coin flips, I've met yeah. those people. Super lucky. Yeah, then go for it. Yep. But most of the time, you should be holding off. Now, we're going to start with the red cards at this point, which begins with Annihilating Fire. It is very yeah, this pillar, awesome. of, it's pillar of flamey, you know, but with instant. and I, I really like this card because more ways to just make sure that the card doesn't come back. Yep. Uh, I wish it didn't let you regenerate. I just wish it had incinerate. It was just carbonized. Right. And but But it's fine like it is now. It's just great that it takes care of a messenger, and messenger is just going to be so annoying. Yeah, I mean, ah, I don't know. Do you think they would? I don't think they would use this over Pillar of Flame in in that regard. But certainly in limited, this is going to be like the go-to removal spell. Oh yeah, in in yeah, in limited, yeah. Yeah, in limited, like you know, this is your all-star removal spell, and this is the one spells you want to open when you're in red and in limited, whether it's sealed or draft, and. You know, it's just going to be like, well, does it die to Annihilating Fire? You yeah. Know, that's going to be a test that all the creatures have to pass to be sort of considered some of the top tier ones in that. in that format. Bellows Lizard. I, I've never liked cards like this. They want to make one drops matter. I know, but I know, but it, 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 it costs seven mana to try to trade with something that matters. It's just... Ugh. I've never liked cards like this. I, I never will. I don't like one mana Ground Pounder Fire Breathers. Yeah, They're just not entertaining. I mean, Stone Rite was sweet. No, it doesn't. It wasn't good at all. It, I mean, when it when it soul bonded with your flyers and stuff. Yeah, but it, right? it's because it was like decent limited because you it had bonded. flyers. Yeah. I get it, but it made them more awesome. And you didn't make your fight. You didn't. You you turned every guy into a fire breather, not just a fire breather. True. And this and guy actually problem, has yeah. worse fire breathing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have to make the bad cards to make the good cards. All right. Uh, constructed one hundred percent. No limited. If this is your 23rd card, I wouldn't like cry about it, but it wouldn't be. You show this person this card, and they're like, what went wrong, man? I'm so yeah. sorry. Brah. I, what I, happened? I, I hope you. Who cut you off for red? on for top eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Goblin Rally. Dig it. Love it. All right. Let's do some Goblin stuff in standard. We got Krinko. Let's do this. We Woo! can make it happen. Yeah, Krinko and the Goblin Rally and the Tab Krinko and double all the Goblins. This is like going to be part of my crazy experiment deck because I want to play Battle ri battle Him and Goblin Makers and wow. and Ritual and, and so Copy deep. Ritual and then Experiment and then Copy oh. Experiment. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Epic Experiment deck, sure. Burn at the stake. Yeah, burn at the stake. Now, Goblin Rally, you know, it's sort of a captain's call in red for another man eating another guy. And, you know, they're, they're goblins, which is sweet. Just I mean, it's, it's four power and toughness for five mana. And right. 
The there's Spread only a couple out. red cards. Obviously, the overload deal one is a big problem for this card. But for the most part, I think this card is actually pretty fun. I think that well, this is sort of the card that will actually make your opponent sideboard in that. You know, yes, that sideboard in the one damage to all the creatures because because it is so. This powerful card would card. not be uncommon if it wasn't good. True. That's just this is these are the lines. Like sometimes I'm like, is this card good or not? And I'm like, it's uncommon there's and it's a, a very unique. Abilities, so I guess it's probably good. Yep, I think it's very good. Now, again, constructed, no, limited, hell yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Ash Zealot, now I went over Ash Zealot in the show, and I, I made a lot of comparisons to Tunnel Ignis. And can you, just, can you just give me a repeat of how you said it in the Magic Show? Uh, well, I said it two ways. The first way I said it incorrectly, uh, which is Tunnel Ignis. And the, <laughs> shut up. And <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, like a lot of people were just, you know, they, a lot of the feedback I got was just like, but Evan, it's a two man of two two first strike haste, and what I was mainly focused on was its second ability. Now it's wait, first it has it has a second ability besides first strike and haste. Yeah, exactly. But what I was focused on was the second ability because yeah. it, you know it was it was previewed by a developer on Wizard's site, and when they sort of showcase these types of cards, you know, it's great Sable Stag, you mm -hmm. know, it's. Um, it's the Bayloth that gains you four life against Jund. Uh, uh, help me out here. Opposite of Bayloth? Opposite of Bayloth, thank you. So it, it's these, you know, again, it's these, these scalpels where there's like, Snapcaster is too damn good. Now, for me, I mean, I think that's pretty obvious to everybody, and Wizard sure as hell yep. knew it by that point. And so they make Rest in Peace, they make Ash Zealot to allow the aggressive decks some sort of option to answer the yep. best creature they've ever printed. And I don't think that's going to happen. What I do think is correct, and what I thought I should have pointed, pointed out and, and noted, was that two mana, two two, first strike haste all by itself is terrific. Yes, and the main reason I like it is it competes with the white creatures that have first strike, mm. as well as it does the same thing as the white creatures, as it beats the living crap out of zombies. It's an early great way to to mm. clog up the board. Like the problem with the zombie yeah. deck is it's hard. To, you can't kill any of their creatures in the other game, mm -hmm. so you just have to get in there and interact with cards that like favor, even if you don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy just sort of allows you to yeah, always have first strike. Yeah. Whenever they play their grave crawler from their graveyard, they're taking mm -hmm. three damage. Like, well, you'll never do that because you're yeah, you just can't. Well, yeah, I mean that's what I was sort of focusing on was that that type of ability doesn't mean you're going to play into it. it doesn't mean you're going to get all this free damage. It just means your opponent is just going to play around it. Yeah. And it's nice not, lingering souls. Yeah, it's not necessarily going to do what you want it to do, mm -hmm. but what but what you ultimately are happy with is a two two first strike haster yes. for just two mana. Yeah, the card is really good. I like it a lot. It's very good. I agree. I might have sort of uh, brushed it off a little quickly in the show, so that's on me. Now, Batterhorn, when Red gets an Indrik Stomp Howler, it doesn't get the extra toughness, and it doesn't get to destroy enchantments, but it is destroying artifacts, and it does have four power and three toughness. It is very good. I don't think the artifacts in the set are that great. Yeah. So it's not really going to be an insane limited card. Like, if there was a ton of really good equipment, right. I think this card would see more play, but as, na as for now, Maybe if, maybe if, which I'm hoping, Demir is actually artifact based. Eh, I'm really? hoping. Yeah, I'm really hoping. Didn't they already do that with the yeah, shard with, Esper with and Esper? With Esper, and I'm hoping yeah. they do it again. Give me some more artifacts. I still need to make trading post work. Oh my god, you I still need post. to make it work. Oh, so so is this the part where like you were right, and then like, but over time <laughs> I've become right about trading post? You were, you. I was never right. That card was awful the entire time. You I hear that? I love you say it. Say that one more time, because man, I felt really good. Trading was, post was really bad, and you were right, and I was wrong. Oh, oh man, I'm savoring it. I'm savoring it. All right, so Batterhorn for I, those I, at home. Does anyone have a tissue? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm getting right. This is weird. What's going on here? Batterhorn constructed no limited, probably. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think there's enough artifacts. I think it'll be a good cyber. It could, it could see some main deck it play. It could see some play just because you're like your 22nd, 23rd. Yeah. You want a five mana something or other. You want a curve, right? Yeah, you and know? it's a May, which I don't like. Well, I It's mean, a beast. It should be a must. Manic Vandal's a must. Scrap Melter's a must. I feel like red cards should be musts. I think you focus too much on weird little points, but okay. Cobble Brute. I've not, what? Cobble, what? Does it matter if it's a May? Yeah, it does. It well, gives. no, but it's it's bad because what happens is your opponent's going to play it, and you're going to have some sweet artifact, and you're going to have to be like, you have to you have to destroy this thing, like, and you're just going to feel terrible. No, you don't, because if they miss the trigger, the new rule says you don't have to. Uh, all right. Anyway, cobble brute. They missed their trigger. Right, we have a judge. I just want to make sure I'm not cheating. All right, oh, good. well, they can still be dirtles, and that's okay. <laughs> um, cobble brute, four mana, five two. 
good old fashioned four mana five two. <laughs> it's, it's it's at least better than the crocodiles that used. That, I was Man, gonna say the, the, sn- the, the power snake, creep right? is ridiculous. Oh what? Yeah. They make five ones and now they're five twos. This will not stand. I cannot. We need to send complaint letters to wizards. I'm writing one right now. <laughs> I'm not. All right. Survey. Explosive impact coming to get you. What? It's just Lava Axe 2.0. I know, but I do like that it can kill a creature. I'm not exactly. Is that just like a building burning? What's going on there? I don't know. It's, it's, is that it's, a creature? Is that a... I feel like it was drawn in the size of a penny, and then they blew it out. And then they went... And then I can't really understand what's happening there. But there's but a lot of skulls in the fire. At the end of the day, constructed no, limited... Yes, probably. Yeah. yeah sure. Oh, insane and limited. Yep. It kills all the things. It kills like it kill, also kills all the bombs. You know, like even if yep. you were to open a Mizium mortars, then they play a Draco genius, and you're like, ah, but you have the explosive mm-hmm. impact. Get rid of them. Get out of here. Guild feud. Now wait a uh-huh. second. Wait a second. It's a big wall of text. However, immediately brushed off for no reason. So I was like, you know, going through the spoiler, trying to get a little bit ready yeah. for this, and I was reading it again. And if you read it real close, what it says is, you can re- you can look at the top three and put one of uh, put a creature in those top three and to play. You may do that to your opponent. This card basically just says you can look at the top three and reveal them, and if there's a creature, you just get it every turn. Yeah. You don't have to let them get things and attack or whatever. Nope. It's a may. Mm-hmm. You can, all I'm saying is that it's a six mana. If there's a creature in my top three, I get it for free every turn. I think that's cool. I Wait, thought that. I actually think it makes the card a lot more interesting. But can you not do yours and you can take theirs and you get theirs, right? Uh, Did I, I read think it they wrong? just fight. Wait, you can just put their creature. Wait, okay. Let me. Let me I'm Wait gonna, a second. We got to make sure this is right, Evan. All right. At, that doesn't seem right. At the beginning of your upkeep, that's ours. Target opponent reveals the top three cards of his or her library. Uh, May put a creature from among them and then puts the rest. You do the same with the top three cards of your library. No, he gets the ability too. Oh, he gets the ability first. He gets the ability and then you get the ability. Uh, I don't like it anymore. Now, not only did I misread it, I tried to get all excited about me misreading it. The card's bad. This I, is my life. I thought about this. Like I was like, there's no way that this card, right. you get the options. Never yet. mind. However, a card that is terrific is Gutter yes, Snipe. Yes, Gutter Snipe is absolutely phenomenal. I think it will awesome. see, I think this is the new Geist for the Blue Red Delver decks, and no one's really been playing with it. Wow. Look at how good of the ability it is. It, it's a must high. kill. It's ridiculous. All I know is like my foil is ready for my cube because this card does work. I mean, it turns every every burn spell that's targeted out of the creature is now a searing blaze essentially. Yes, and that's really good. Yeah, Pillar of Flame does two into the face. Mm-hmm. Uh, you. Another sweet thing, you can't really do it in standard anymore, but like Talrend, if anyone remembers playing with Talrend, the best thing about Talrend is you you tried to cantrip into cantrips. Yeah. And now this card does the same thing, and when oh, you get man. to do that, it's awesome. So I, I really like Gutter Snipe. I think it's like going to see a lot of play. Yeah, I mean, and when you Gutter Snipe, and then you can sort of a Jet Charm, deal them two, you know, find more instants and sorceries, play them, deal them two, you know, yeah, like. This is the Delver deck, by the way. This card is going to add up, like, yep. and do serious work. Card is sweet, way, way underestimated. Lobber Crew, Lobber Crew. All right, three mana, O4 Defender, sure. Tap, deal damage to opponents. Uh, yeah, okay. This is one this of those is like, like the most boring cards ever. No, it's not boring per se. Like they want it. To, it's they want it to be flavorful. You know, yeah. they're like they're they're launching the cannons. You're playing certain spells. They're mm-hmm. tapping it. It's you know, it's cute. It's just not exciting. No. In limited, it's just not exciting. When when we have a pinger for creatures, that is awesome. And this is just kind of like, and its name is Staticaster. Yeah. <laughs> and you have Lobber Crew, and you're like. Mm. Mm, lobber crew. All right, so limited rating. Uh, three, two. Uh, uh, yeah. Limited rating of sadness. Constructor rating of get out of here. Yeah. Minotaur aggressor. Whoa. All right. When I saw this card, the first thing I thought was Avacyn restored. Okay. And it made me mad. Avacyn restored. The biggest problem I have with it is the cards that were like there was such a disparity of how awesome the cards were. Yeah, there were. It was like five cards in your deck were. Far and beyond insane. They yep. were constructed worthy, right. and everything else is just a stinker. And this is just a stinker. It's seven mana for a two toughness creature. Ugh, man, you do this on turn seven. You just you're not going to feel that good about yourself. Like, mm. 
six two first strike. Okay. Yeah, like look at him. Like what happens is you're building your mana and your economy and magic, and you're like getting your lands in play, uh. and then finally you produce a seven drop, and it's this big mon minotaur, and he runs out, and he's like, I'm uh, ready, and then he stubs his toe, and he's like, oh, I gotta go home. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm yeah. out, I'm out. <laughs> this is ridiculous. You know, your opponent, like, plays seven, Angel of Serenity. You play <laughs> turn seven, Minotaur, Chris, sir. <laughs> I feel terrible I about mean, myself. I mean, you do get to attack with first strike, which is fine, but it's still seven mana. It's fine. To it's get a seven drop, to get seven mana in limited, it's like around turn ten, maybe 11 that this card is going to hit play. Like, sometimes you flood and you draw your seven lands right away, but it's still you don't want to. Right, and do you play this even in sealed? Yeah, I think you do. Yeah. Unless unless your deck, like, unless you're hyper aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I think you do want something at the top of the curve, but man, <sighs> this card will get pushed out so quickly. Yeah, like, it's not good. Oh, man. Pyro Convergence. I, I mean, this is one of those cards. It's cute. It's neat. It's kind of expensive. Dude, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a goblin with a flamethrower. It's awesome. I love yeah. the Yeah! <laughs> Freaking goblin with a flamethrower is sweet. It's so cool. I can imagine, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure at this point the reason it's five mana is that it can hit creatures yeah. um, and not just players. If it was just players, it probably well, and three. It's no, 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 because like Burning Vengeance and Furnace Celebration, they all have this like a way bigger restriction than whenever you play a multicolored card. Eh. Mm. Multicolor doesn't seem that hard to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing for me is that because it hits creatures, it makes it like infinitely better than yeah. if it just hit players. Well, no, Burning Vengeance and Fla Furnace Celebration did both, but they were like flashback, and whenever a guy gets sacked, like right, right, right. Like, I think I think has they were hard. They were way, way, way higher bars to cross. I understand. Yeah, this one, you know, uh, constructed no, but like in limited, I think it's pretty draft good. around. Yeah, draft out. This is one of those cards that you pick early, and then you're just like, all right, I want a bunch of multicolored stuff yep. so that I can get the most use out of it as possible. And multiples are disgusting. Yeah, multiples of this card would be so good. <laughs> Race Course Fury. <laughs> what? I love this <laughs> card. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I love this card so much. It's so cool. It is cool. I yeah. will give you that it is cool. I love the image. I love the art. Yeah. This is my favorite ever. <laughs> Just <laughs> like the sense of movement and OMG, this this thing is like barreling down on me is 100% there. The artist <laughs> did a terrific job in that. The card, not so much. No. I'm actually glad it's uncommon so I don't get to see it that often. But I would like to see if it ever finds a cyborg against like an anti, like, like a a anti-creature deck and you're just like I'm gonna give them all haste what you're like you play your messenger and then you give it haste and you oh shoot it's tap mm. moving on <laughs> survey the wreckage the yeah no it just I mean you know you know they try to make land destruction interesting. Land destruction should absolutely not be uh, costed aggressively. Yeah. It used to be, and everyone hated life because your game would end before it even got started. Mm -hmm. Turn one bird, turn two stone rain. Like you're, sometimes your game is just over. Like they literally just won the game with that stupid little yeah. play. And uh, as, as has been discussed many times amongst the devs, like a stone rain type effect, a destroy the land effect, is perfect at two. At, sorry, at three point five mana. Sure. But they just, you know, they can't mana don't work. It, yeah. And it just, uh, so everything is four or above, and so it's demolish or whatever, and it's stuff like survey the wreckage so you can get this little dork out of it, and it's just not that good. No. No. Just, I mean, limited now, constructed now. Tenement Crasher. Tenement? I, no, I like this card a lot. Yeah. I, I understand know, that the 6-2 haste. Well, compare this to the friggin' 7 drop. Yeah, but six mana is so much easier to get to than seven. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, compare this. Like, instead of a 6-2, you get a 5-4. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have first strike, but it's, you know, it's going to impact the board earlier. Mm -hmm. It's common versus uncommon, so you're going to actually sort of probably see those in your pool. And, you know, it just gets in there. Yeah, six six <laughs> mana can get cast. You usually cast it on turn seven to eight. Mm -hmm. And seven drops, you cast around eight, nine, ten. Right. So, I, I like six drops more. I rarely, rarely play seven drops in limited. Yep. Because they have to be crazy good and yeah. not just six two first yeah. like hasters like. Okay. But this card will see play, especially because it finishes off the unleash kind of like strategy where it's like keeping on the aggressive, right? And just keep getting in there, and make your opponent like try to catch up. I, I love it. And plus, 
a lot of these cards help beat like the detain control decks because the mm. haste lets you and there's a lot of haste in the set to where I feel like this is like I definitely feel like they're like once we see the guilds like they're gonna have matchups. Yeah. Where like I think Rakdos can just annihilate the Azorius. Uh, Azorius, but Azorius yeah. is going to annihilate Jun or uh or Golgari because right. Golgari's all about making bigger guys once they die and right. sort yeah. of a slow sort of grinding. And Golgari is gonna beat the crap out of Rakdos. Because all their guys are huge. Uh, they're and they're they both the same size, but I can keep making my bigger and yours can't block. Exactly. I do like how this is this is shaping up. They they do have a lot of haste guys in this set. Yeah, a ton, a ton in Rakdos, just yeah. a ridiculous amount. And I like it. I think it's yeah. great, and it just plays another flavor. So like, while there's some Azet cards we've seen, this is absolutely a Rakdos card. Yeah. Uh, Traitor's Instinct, a cool reprint from with Rise like of the Eldrazi. With way cooler art. With way cooler. I mean, I need that girl is mad. Yeah. She's gonna kill somebody. Yeah. I'm scared. You, sh scared. you shouldn't have cheated on her. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that'll be the last time you do that. Literally. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Untap the creature. It gets plus two, plus zero oh in haste. And in the world of Rise of the Eldrazi and Battlecruiser magic, like you would often steal like an Eldrazi and yeah. get, make them annihilate and things. But in Traitor's Instinct, I think it also sort of goes along the curve, per se. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a Cackler, and then you have a Shred Freak, and you have some three drop, and then you're just like Traitor's Instinct that... And just get you get yeah. all the time. Yeah, that's why I like Trader's Instinct, just because it does give a, cr a, a bonus. Sure. So it's, it's a pretty good reprint. Yeah, it's for me, it's a lot more interesting because, you know, I felt that the, ra the Rise of the Eldrazi was more of a late game. Mm -hmm. The You know, when it was in Rise of the Eldrazi, it was more late game, and now it's more sort of on the curve. Yeah. Which I think is a lot more interesting. That's really cool. Udvara Hellkite. This card makes Whee! no sense at all because it's an 8-mana 6-6 six, six flyer that, like, oh, hey, you going to deal with my dragon now? Meh. All right, so the best thing I can do now is make more dragons. Yeah. <laughs> I, for, I mean, I don't, like, for me, it felt like in terms of its ability, like, it should have like, been sort of more like a broodmother type thing. It should have had, like, a, you know, a mother-esque ability because it's yes. making dragons, you yeah. know, versus, like, a hell kite that is, for some reason, putting in dragon tokens. Like, I mean, you know, for what it's worth, this is Timmy terrificness. This is, yeah. like, kitchen table, all-star, I want to play my dragons. I want to play my little like my little two mana dragons with fire breathing and stuff, and my changelings. Play it, attack you! I'm getting you, and I'm getting you, and I'm getting you, and I'm making dragons while we're doing it. High five! Yeah, it's so ridiculous. In constructed, no, in limited, but in limited, it will be good. It will be absolutely played. It's a little expensive. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Is it? Yeah, I mean it's a six <gasps> six. That you didn't make an is it joke. <laughs> it's okay, but the you know the idea that in limited you untap with this guy, I don't think you're losing. Well, obviously, I'm just saying. You're just like, but it's expensive. I'm like, but you untap and you just win. Yeah, the card is busted once you untap with it. It's very good. Yeah, it's very good. All right, so Via Shino Racketeer. That is the end of our Rakdos review. With like the coolest card ever. Uh, well, He's all like silhouetted in the shadows. I love that Red is getting card draw. Yes. I love it. I love all of it. Yeah, like he's so cool, like because in the early turns, what I love about him he, he, immediately is he attacks, right? Yep. He isn't like the, the looter. Right. He gets to attack, he gets to trade because of two power. That's going to trade with bears. Mm -hmm. But it smooths out your early draw. So, like, how many games have you played where you're like, all right, I'll keep this four land, three spell? Land, land, while I'm dead. Yep, I'm done. And now you're like, discard a land, okay, now I get a draw out of it. Nice. It just like gives red consistency, which is cool. It so, gives you a long game. And yep. that's what I like the most about it. Yeah, I definitely like this guy a lot. Yep, he is good. He will absolutely make all of your limited decks. I won't see him in Constructed, but that's okay, because they don't all should be going in Constructed. Mm -hmm. so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our Rakdos review. All of the red cards and all of the Rakdos cards were three in. We got two to go. You are right in the middle of our Return to Ravnica set review. We will be following up tomorrow with Golgari cards. My favorite! <laughs> da, 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 da. Then we get finished with my favorite, Celestiac. Yeah, sweet. Just you wait. So for Evan Irwin. Oh, yeah, Brad Nelson. <laughs> That's who I am. Anyway, <laughs> we're here. We're tapping the cards. We'll see you tomorrow so you don't have to. We'll see you tomorrow so you don't have to see yourself tomorrow? That made no sense, Evan. Shut up! Okay, cut, cut.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to <laughs> our... Just, I was, like, doing weird faces because I thought you weren't going to... Anyway, I'm good. Oh, Brad. 